My name is uh, Mother Steffi, aka uh, Nikki. Uh, I'm from the house of Miss Rahi, and uh, there is a parish chapter here in Paris, France. Okay, and where's the other chapter? Well, you have a chapter in Italy, you have, uh, and it's, you know, it, it spreads out because you have uh, members in the UK, you have members in Italy, you have members in the Netherlands, so far. Okay. You know. And it's the house of? Miss Rahi. Miss Rahi. Yeah. So how did you get involved with the house of Miss Rahi? When I, uh, when I came to New York, uh, I met Andre, who's actually the father of the House of Mizrahi, and um, it was a good friend of mine. We had a friendship, and uh, I knew right then and then that he was heavily involved in ballroom, so I started going to ball and everything. But early on, I had my gay mother, her name is Gio Brooks. She introduced me to the dance style, which is Vogue and everything. So early in the nine in an early nineties, I uh, was going to different uh, gay club in Paris, one named the Palace, and um, we used to carry and he used to show me different moves and everything. Then in ninety six, when I decided because it was like a dream of mine to uh, go to America, uh, I went to New York City. It's when I really was exposed to the ballroom culture in New York City. How you can call it like the makeup of ballroom. Right, right. Um, and so you came back to Paris. And I came back to Paris in 09 <clears throat> and uh, then uh, I met a good friend of mine uh, named uh, Lysandra. And uh, I noticed right away that she was heavily also involved in the dancing and everything. And um, she used to go to hip hop festivals where they used to put a category which called Vogue and also mix it with whacking. And she used to go out there as a drag and everything. And to me, it dawned on me that, you know, um, you don't go to those hip hop festivals to Vogue, you should Vogue at a ball. And I told her that. And I was like, uh, that's where you should go and Vogue. And she was like, well, we don't have balls in Paris and everything. And I told her, well, let's make some. Let's make it happen. Because you're going to bridge the gap between the young generation and myself so we could start something here. And that's how it first started, you know, because Eight years ago. Yeah. Um, because she was, you know, very eager to 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 all of this, you know. And what we what we basically did is to bring the ballroom culture in Paris. We tried to put the foundation of what it is, how it gets done how you throw a ball, how do you promote a ball, how you bring the categories together so everybody could be involved and uh, participate. You know, that's what we did at the beginning. So when you started the ball, you were already in the house? Yes. Okay, so that was a plus that you were already in the house? Yeah, it was the plus for me was that I had that knowledge and experience because I lived in New York City. So I was able to be exposed to the culture because I used to go to balls a lot, go and support Andre, travel, go to Atlanta and uh, get exposed to the culture. You know, not necessarily, it took me a minute to understand the lingo, to understand the categories, to understand what it is about, to understand the whole aspect of it. You know, and it's because of that experience and that knowledge that I was able to guide uh, people here and guide La Sandra and explain how we're gonna put all things together so it could at least have a foundation. First of all, uh, when we did this, uh, when we started, I should say, 
I never thought that it would be as big as it is and as big as it's still going to be after I'm not here, I ain't gonna be here, <laughs> you know, because um, it is mostly a need and an urge for young um, lesbians and gays to nowadays express themselves, express the turmoil, express the talent, express their lives. And it that's is, what ball culture does. That's what ball, ballroom culture uh, uh, tend to give people a platform to express all those talents. And it, even ballroom is a celebration to me. How I how I view it, it's a celebration. It's a competition. It's competition. It's celebration. It's a family, and I insist on this, family ties. This is why you say, I have my kids, this is my daughter, this is my son, because you create a bond with someone who's either younger than you or even older than you, but you are sharing your knowledge to that person in order to guide them through, through this ballroom culture. So family bonds are very important. And the last ball just happened the People's Choice Awards Bowl. Now, why is it called the People's Choice Awards? Because it gave the people, now that you have a ballroom, a European ballroom, the chance to vote for their favorites so they can be rewarded on the hard work that they have put into ballroom. It happened on last Saturday. Yeah, I know I wanted to attend. I was in. Um, it was beautiful. London. It was really, really beautiful. Well, I it, saw was, it was called the Revolution of Color. People Choice Awards Bowl. It looked good from looking at um, the Paris Ballroom TV. Mm. Um, I, I watched a couple of clips yeah. from there. And thank God to him, Shai Room. Um, he's the man behind the camera and uh, he's able to give. Uh, a platform of what's going on in Paris and showcasing um, the talents of uh, all these beautiful people that we have here showing what they're good at. Okay, now what's the relationship with you and I think his name is Kitty? That's my son. Okay. Kitty Mizrahi, that's his name in the ballroom. But his name as an artist is Kitty Smile. Kitty Smile. Yeah. And that's your son. Yeah, he's in he's in my house, and uh, he's my son. Very, 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 very supportive uh, of me and me as well too. And uh, he's in a, he's a force to be working with. Uh, extremely talented, creative, and uh, has a vision. <laughs> <laughs> Most definitely. When you guys uh, vote for what was it? The, the president? president. I wasn't part of that. Kitty did this manifest, magnificent uh, move by um, bringing the culture right to the Elysee because they they invited him. Yeah, invited him, and he said, "Okay, let's girls, let's go, <laughs> and let's go how we are, point blank." And that's a very very. But he's always like this. He's very daring. He's extremely daring, you know, and uh, that was a daring move because you have no idea how on social media they have been bashed left and right I, I by people. I saw, I saw that. And, I, I couldn't and they're all French, mind yeah. you, because they would not have been in this building if they were not French. Uh, wow. Yeah, but I, I thought it was amazing to watch them vogue and do all of that for the president. Mm -hmm. um, because we haven't done that for our pre none of our presidents in the United States. Yeah, we, we, we did something a little bit in advance. <laughs> yeah, so you take that with your culture that in, in Paris that you guys have done something that nobody else has done. Nobody's, no black culture or no black gay culture has danced for a president. It was very much come as you are. So don't put on a show in order to fit. Don't change in order to fit. Don't wear the mask in order to fit. It was very, we're gonna come as we are, point blank. 
So where were you when it happened? I was working. I couldn't come and I was working, so I didn't get the chance to leave this uh, historical uh, LGBT French uh, <laughs> moment. <laughs> but when you saw it... Oh yeah, I was very proud. I was very proud. I was proud of him, I was proud for him, and I was proud of them. Are you born and raised in Paris? No, I was born in Switzerland. I was born in Switzerland. So I grew up in three different countries, Switzerland. Africa and Paris. In Africa, I grew up uh, in a country called Gabon and in a city called uh, Libreville. Mm. How many languages do you speak? So far, two. I wish because I'm also from. Um, um, my mom was a Caribbean, a Haitian woman, and um, at the time it was also for her. A bit revolutionary to have married an uh, African man. Mm -hmm. This is why I'm part African and part uh, Asian. Africa from uh, Benin. And um, she, she didn't want, they, my parents didn't want us to speak Creole because they, they wanted us to speak a good French and a proper French. And that took me away of my authentic roof, uh, uh, roots of um, speaking the language of my mother, you know, the native language of my mother. Okay. And it's the same thing on the African side. So when did you discover, or when did you come out as? Oh, it was very hard to come out. Um, in my 20s, I came out in my 20s. Um, I did not understood why I liked boy. I did not understood why I was so feminine and I had to uh, hide all that aspect of me. Because of my African background, it was not allowed. What are you doing? What is this? Uh, you can't act that way. It's better for you to act that way. You have to be a boy and all of that. So I came out in my 20s, but it was this struggle of um, Acceptance. This is why for me, the path of acceptance is extremely long because I'm still in the journey of acceptance, uh, of acceptance and also uh, realization, you know, because uh, at the point where I'm at, like, I'm like, oh, I have to completely embrace my femininity and not hide it in a box like I've did all those years and sometimes you need to meet the good people that's gonna help you unlock your locks in your head and give you um, the guidance to uh, uh, be truly yourself you know because sometimes I, when I see the young gang and they're able to really um, blossom into their own uh, i'll be like oh i wish i had that back in those days i yeah. wish i had that but what yeah. you guys have now yeah. to fully because it ain't easy being yourself at all yeah. it's a it's a full-time yeah. struggle to be yourself in this society this french society uh, and uh, i wish i had those weapons to fight back then like, what, what, what do you mean, like... What do I mean by weapon? The f number one weapon is confidence. And you're saying that the young folks today have the confidence. Uh, they have the confidence because of ballroom. Ballroom gave them a platform to fully express themselves, so they have confidence to be completely themselves in the lifestyle that they're in, in society, without, you know, hiding. It's hard. But the ones that find the courage can do it and then they come out to their parents they can fully say to their parents oh mommy daddy I think I want to transition I don't feel comfortable in my body um, the girl in me is calling or the boy in me is calling mm -hmm. and all of that truly need all, all of this you need a whole amount of, of confidence self-confidence guidance and you know to see the path for yourself and set a path for yourself so, are you dating? No, unfortunately, no. no. It's extremely hard to date a black guy. 
because they are not I think to me I feel especially I would say an African descent African black man who happens to be gay or whatever or even bisexual um, it's extremely hard to have a relationship because they don't uh, everything has to be hidden in a hotel room or in a room everything has to be sexual uh, we can't do nothing else but sex 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 and you life ain't about sex at all no, you know don't. life is about you know sharing and having experiences and you know loving nurturing and everything and you mostly can't do that uh, only in the bedroom right well how is the gay scene black gay scene well we have the chance to have um, a, a nightclub which called the I wouldn't say a nightclub because the party goes to different nightclubs. I would say a party that is called BBB. Right. So the party, the BBB stands for black, white, and Arabic people. BBB in, in French language languages. And uh, that party is for ethnic people. And it gives them a space for them in Paris to come and uh, embrace the culture and embrace the music, embrace the, the, the people. It's a gathering spot at the same time. It's weekly, it's every Sunday. And uh, that party gave uh, a solid uh, place to go to so you could be around your people and be yourself. This party is from France, from Paris. Um, Fouad is the promoter of this party and uh, we hold him a whole lot because he's been doing this party for almost 30 years and uh, he gave people of African descent, Caribbean descent and Arabic descent a place to be. And now this is the only black party? Yeah. In Paris? Mm -hmm. There's another one called The Club that's also every Saturday but the place is extremely small uh, you can have a huge gathering up there it's also very very well known and and established like it is it's a tradition tradition party but um, it's uh, the crowd that they cater to is completely different to the crowd that they cater to on Sunday so it's a more the crowd is more diverse on the Sunday, on the parties at the BBD than it is at the club. And then sometimes there's different promoters that come now and then to uh, promote parties also for um, black folks. So blacks don't hang out in the... In the Marais? In the Marais, yeah. Yes, they do. Some of them do, but not the majority of it. It's not like... Uh, it's not like they have a, a a place that they can go to and they know that, oh, this is going to cater to me. Right. The show Pose. The show Pose is excellent. The show Pose is magnificent. The show Pose <laughs> tells the mother... Can I curse? Because it Please, tells yes. the motherfucking story of what it is from point A to point Z. This is why it's so magnificent. And on top of that, it... it it educates and entertains at the same time. It's it's mind blowing. It's my couple of days ago, like a week ago, I got attacked at my job, and um, they said to me, uh, a bunch of Africans, they entered the store and they looked at me, dirty looks, left and right, and everything. Because I I understand that now. I can't believe that I still till today paved the way. Right. Cause now I'm I I I I am aligned with I'm trying to really get aligned with who I am completely. I'm trying to really have this smooth transition and everything. And um, at my job, I came just like this. How I present myself to you? And those Africans looked at me and were like, "What the fuck is this? What was going on?" And then one of, one of them came up to me and was like, um, "What the fuck is wrong with you?" 
And I turned around and I was like, well, excuse me, are you speaking to me? Yeah, yeah, what the fuck is wrong with you? What is this? What is all of this? And I turned and, and I said, and I said, but what the fuck is wrong with you? I do whatever I want to do, okay? But then not knowing that he went and spoke to my colleague and said like, what the fuck is wrong with your colleague over there? Um, I think I'm going to fuck him up outside. Oh, yeah. So it made me realize how tough the struggle is. Yeah. And a non-acceptance of people for people like me. And I would say my people. And when you think of it, it, they could have been white, they could have been, it, it, it don't even matter. Right. Right. Because transgenders and trans person or non-binary person are not accepted still to this day in the society because we not present. We hiding. Right. And you're hiding here in Paris. When I mean by hiding, it's like... We don't have regular jobs. And the fact that they don't have regular jobs erase them from society for people to see that they're present. Right. Do you understand what I mean? I understand. I understand. So then when they see us, they're in total shock. How can it exist? How can this exist? What is this? What is that? How come? And you, you just don't know when I'm at the cash register how many dirty looks and, and I have to be strong and, 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 and completely um, with my Wonder Woman bracelets like this to these mm -hmm. motherfuckers at all time to, you know, shield. And so your boss, your, your, the person that hired you, um, obviously didn't care, but... Well, you know, they always try to go by the routines which is the procedures of things. So they won't get in a jeopardized situation. Right. But when you face to a situation, what, what do you do? You know, so they were like, uh, we're gonna, you can't go to your house by yourself. We're gonna try our best to escort you. Uh, you're gonna go to the uh, PC security uh, downstairs of the mall and we're gonna escort you to the police. You're gonna charge uh, a police report and everything. Mm -hmm. And as soon as I got downstairs to the security, they were like, we don't have any staff to escort you to the police. You're on your own. So I was like, okay, wow. well, well, let me do, uh, let me go on my own then, you know? And in the back of my mind, I was like, well, what about if those motherfuckers are trying to find me right. like a motherfucking rabbit to catch? Right. Luckily, you know, they didn't. But they said what they said. Right. They could have go with it or not, but they said what they said. Right. This is what's so crazy. And even when I went to the police, I had to make um, the police officer understand that I am a transgender person. You have to write this in the file. Because they didn't attack me because I was uh, such and such, they attack me because of homophobic right. and transgender uh, and and um, transphobe uh, uh, issues. Well, you know, in, in in America, well, maybe you don't know, but in America, um, that's the new gay. Trans. Trans is the new gay in America. Yeah, trans is the new gay in America because, like you said here in Paris everybody's hidden nobody talks nobody knows each other there are no trans people up front but now in America they are they are but, but you have beautiful people to uh, inspire you I love Janet Mock I love Dominique that plays in in um in pose when you see a woman like that and Dominique is such a, a, a mirror to me because I myself too was in America illegal for 13 years and everything so when I see her story it, it, it rings a bell to my heart because I live that same path because and I'd be like oh my god you know I applaud this woman all the way because of her uh, the journey that she took 
she remained polished all the way. Wow, and now she's a star. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Yeah. And 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 America is I don't I wanna say that they're accepting, I think they're more tolerant. Now. Now of it. Yeah. Because again, But they don't accept. Well, tolerance is okay. Because it, it, as long yeah, as but you, when you think of it, okay, I tolerate you, but I don't really accept you. But guess what? I don't care about you enough to want you to accept me. I want you to be able to leave me alone. True. <laughs> yeah. And let me go on about my business. Mm -hmm. So you accept my condition, that means that you won't do anything. You won't arm me. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So when, you, when, when that happens, I'm okay with that. Uh, but when you don't accept me, that means that you're up to, to attack me, to throw things at me, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. to you know, that's erase sort of, me from the face exactly, of earth. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Mm. Um, and it started with gay folks, so trans weren't even. Um, well, I mean, we call them drag queens. We call them that wasn't even. Oh, but they, you know, they, we are the ones who have it the most. The the from the gays, from the straight, from everybody. Yeah, and I, we I have, understand. That. We have it the most, especially you. You, when you have the chance to look a certain way, yeah, you will be that hate girl, but as soon as you don't have this correctly, they read you for filth. Yeah. Let me tell you, when I went to New York City uh, last month, and I've seen this girl, this stranger, the woman at Starbucks, working, being beautiful, simple, yeah. and she, she had no tits on and everything, but that was a complete woman. Yeah. That was a change in the woman. It inspired me so much and gave me courage to, when I was going to step foot in my job, I would be determined to also bring who am I to them. But look what I have to face sometimes. And I, and I realize also that when my attack ain't going to be the first one, ain't going to be the last one. But know that you're paving the way. That the that's future. that's that's what I uh, that's what a friend also told me, and I, I have to keep in mind that you know I st I've paved the way for ballroom. Now I have to still pave the way for this. It's like huh, on my little shoulders, I'd be like, oh God. But you're why? a leader. You're a leader. It's always been in you, and that's why you're leading now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. We